<coughs> Another example of a drill bit we have in the shop is the uh, Forstner bit. Uh, we don't use these much, but I just want to show you what it looks like. Again, the, uh, the shank part here, where the chuck would grip it, up here, this part does the cutting, this part would cut the outside of the circle, this part here would, would uh, um, if you notice the uh, cutting edge right here, that would cut into the wood and lift out the big chips, chips of wood from the center part of the circle. This would you know, score the outside edge to allow those big pieces to get picked up and drawn out. I'm going to go ahead and cut do a cut, a, a, a drill a hole with the smaller version of the same bit, uh, just so you can see how it works. Um, but the uh, <clears throat> these generally run from about an inch in diameter up to this is somewhere three or three and a quarter inches in diameter. Um, <clears throat> so let's see, this one work. I think. Yep. Okay. I need the chuck wrench, don't I? So what would happen if that weren't tight in there? Yeah, that's a good question. What would happen? I think that <clears throat> this thing will bite into the wood and then it'll slip inside the chuck, yeah. which is really bad. It tends to tear up the shank and do all cause other, other kinds of hate and discontent. So we're <laughs> going to make sure that this is really nice and tight here. Also, I'm forgetting my work piece. I'm going to lower the table a little bit here so I can fit in <clears throat> the uh, fit in the work piece. That, that looks nice, a little bit down, there we go. And of course, um, if we're trying to make an accurate hole in a given place, we would need to mark the wood ahead of time. And generally what we do is line these holes up based on the center of a circle. So if I uh, <clears throat> mark a center on here, something like this, This is where I want my, my hole to be, centered on that mark. Mm -hmm. Hang on. Okay. I'll bring that here under here. And here's a trick I can use. I can bring down the center point of the bit onto that center mark and kind of crunch it and smoosh it into the wood a little bit. And then I can lock this down while I secure the piece of wood. So I've got that, I've got that in there. I can secure it. And I'll be able to drill that hole. So let's take a look at that. We'll get this nice and tight here. So what's this called? That's called the quill lock. Drill so clearly that means this is the quill. Correct. This part here is called the quill. This, this here is the chuck. The quill is this big part here. The part that runs down the center is called the spindle. So some people actually call this a spindle lock, but quill lock I think is a more accurate description. So we'll come down here and drill that. We've got it nice and tight. We've got our longer side to the left. Safety Are you on. concerned about the size of this hole and how fast you're going and all that? Yes. Since it's a bigger hole, we'll be taking our time, just like with the uh, spade bit. We're going to feed it into the wood more slowly um, so that <clears throat> it, it can do it smoothly without trying to chunk out big pieces or break loose or damage the bit. Might have heard that break a little bit. Yeah. Right? So we're going to look at the other yeah, side. Yeah, we'll look at the other side. And also, as you're, as I'm doing this, there's a certain feel to it. I can feel how, how well the, the bit is biting into the wood and tearing away the wood at a reasonable speed. I'm not putting excessive pressure on it to try to hurry up. At the same time, I don't want to take forever, so I'm doing a moderate speed that I can feel that the, the drill bit is able to steadily make progress through the wood, and that that works out well for me. <clears throat> so. We'll, Take this off now and take a look how we do. Not too bad. A little bit of, you can see a little bit of uh, pretty clean. tearing, but it came out pretty nicely. A little tiny, you can see a little tiny bit of uh, breakout right there. But that's <clears throat> kind of the nature of woodworking. Do you want to show them a half a circle? Oh, sure. That'll be fun. This is, 
This is why a Forstner bit <coughs> has any advantage over the other bits because it's, it's more able to cut less than a whole circle. I, the Forstner bit is, is less dependent on the center of the bit. Like the, the spade bit itself would be really difficult for it to, um, to grip the wood and make that cut if you don't have a, a full center in there. I think I need the, the other clamp. So we're going to cut a half a circle. And if you tried this with a twist drill, you probably would have bad results. Uh, yeah. Marginal at best. Okay, I'm sure places. Okay, there we go. All right, let's see that go. Again, we're going to take our time. Stop there and I'm going to picture. Okay. Okay. Let's see how that looks. We have a little, a little flaw here. Didn't, didn't. A little bit of breakage. Yeah. But overall, the hole came out reasonably well. We could have probably jammed another piece up against this while we were doing it to, to avoid a little bit of that. Yeah. But you can see that. You did, can get the job done if you have to. Did yeah. kind of a neat, relatively neat job there. Uh, let's just see another um, another couple different drilling devices. I'm not going to take the time to use this one, but this is called a circle cutter or a fly cutter. And we can adjust this Allen screw in the middle. As we adjust this in and out, we can get a different size hole. We can go up to... Um, something like a, a six inch diameter hole with this. Of course, when you're cutting a lot of wood like that at a big distance like that, you really have to go slow through the wood with the fly cutter. That's not one you can really hurry with. It's really easy to overheat this, uh, this cutting bit and, uh, <clears throat> and do damage there. So that's, that's a fly cutter. Another one we use a lot is the hole saw. And let's take a look here at, at, um, at the way it comes. There's, there's the, the saw itself which is sort of like, you can see saw teeth there on it in a circular pattern, and then the mandrel, and the mandrel's gonna attach by screwing into the back. Okay, <laughs> time out while I get the right one. There it's gonna go. attach by screwing into the back side here. And I've actually got this little locking ring here to, to tighten this so it doesn't <clears throat> spin and that, that one definitely needs to have its center in place so this drill bit can make the center. Then this comes in and, and cuts out the circle itself, and you end up with a big chunk of wood stuck in here you got to dig out later, but that, that it still works very well. And these guys start at about uh, three-fourths of an inch diameter, or one-inch diameter, and go up to about three-inch diameter this way. These are really common in putting locks in doors, but they can be useful, obviously, for other things. Then we would switch, and we could switch the mandrel. We just have to have one or two of them, and we can switch from one hole, hole saw to another to, uh, to do the job. And just like any other cutting tool, these will get dull eventually, and they'll have to be either sharpened or replaced. Same as the drill bits, all the, all the other drill bits um, get a lot of wear and tear that way, but that's a hole saw. Good for metal? Sheet metal can be. Yeah. But generally, we use it for wood. Yeah. Okay, thanks very much. Always um, wear your safety glasses and, you know, uh, um, follow all the safety rules at all times. Just like any machine, this machine can hurt you, and you need to treat it with great respect. Don't be terrified of it, but um, be aware as you go to use it. Thanks, and we'll see you for the next, next time soon. Mm-hmm. <laughs>